Reading from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, chapter 9, beginning at verse 10. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Those of us in Perth County have experienced our first heat wave of the summer this week, although technically summer has not yet arrived. But like most Canadians, we complain about the heat and the humidity as much as we do about the frigid cold weather we sometimes experience during the winter months. But one thing I know is that the farmers will be happy this week, especially those who have planted corn, because corn loves the heat. I learned this little tidbit of wisdom from listening carefully to farmers in the narthex of the church on Sunday mornings who talk about the weather in the state of their crops. Lately, I've been planting a few crops of my own on a little patch of soil in our backyard. I've been doing this somewhat haphazardly, planting a vegetable garden for the last 27 seasons. The best vegetable garden I ever tended was waiting for us when we arrived in Shakespeare in June of 1994, the good folks from the two congregations had planted it. There were vegetables growing in that garden that I had never heard of, like kohlrabi. I was secretly hoping that the same gardeners who planted that garden would return the next spring and create an annual tradition, but I was wrong. The next year, the garden became my responsibility. Of course, back then I didn't know which end of the hoe was up, and this was before Google. They didn't offer 4-H clubs in the neighborhood that I grew up in. But I guess I figured, how hard can it be? You put some seed in the ground, you watch it grow. I made my way to Canadian Tire, purchased a garden rake, a few tools. I even bought a book by gardening guru Ed Lawrence. That first summer, I would linger in the garden for hours, trying to look like I knew what I was doing. I sought gardening advice from some of you, but you were reluctant to give me any advice, because either you enjoyed watching me flail around out there, or you suspected, quite correctly, that I wasn't really interested in gardening advice. What I really wanted was someone to blame when it didn't go well. Or maybe you understood that gardening, like life, is a process of learning by trial and error. Fake it until you make it, as someone has said. So every year since, there has been a different challenge, some new adversity from which I have learned. Green beans, for instance. Two years ago, I planted green beans. In a matter of days, the tender green shoots burst through the soil. But then, just when things started to look promising, a herd of ravenous rabbits descended on my crop. Locusts would have left more behind. So along with the old proverb, corn loves heat, you might want to add, rabbits love green beans. Cucumbers. Most years I've had great success growing cucumbers, 
And then one year I had an infestation of tiny yellow beetles. It was a disaster. This year something is getting at my seed potatoes. I'm finding previously planted potatoes unearthed and relocated around my backyard. I asked someone, do squirrels like potatoes? I planted some more seed potatoes last week in the deeper in the soil this time. I'm expecting to harvest them sometime in 2024. The best tomato plants I ever had came from Ruby McMillan. I can't remember what she called them, so I call them Ruby McMillans. All of this somehow brings me back to Paul's letter to the church in Corinth in the passage that I read a moment ago. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity. This may be the very first stewardship letter addressed to the congregation in Corinth. This may be an appeal for funds to meet the annual budget covered in theological corn syrup to make it go down easier. Maybe even the faint echo of a strange spiritual economy. Invest in God and God's people and the return will be abundance. Or to borrow Paul's decidedly rural analogy, scatter the seed and the harvest will be bountiful. Keep in mind that Paul was a tent maker, not a farmer. So how was he to know that sowing seed guarantees nothing? Absolutely nothing. Planting crops is, in fact, a risky business, to say the least. Some years, seeds rot in the ground, wash away in heavy rains, or blow away in hot wind on parched soil. You don't have to tell a farmer that there are no guarantees in life. For all of its beauty and richness, life can be exceedingly hard at times. But neither did you have to tell St. Paul. Recounted in the next chapter, Paul lists of trials and tribulations is long. Five times, Paul says, I've received 40 lashes minus one. Three times beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. In danger just about everywhere. In toil and hardship. Many a sleepless night hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked, and besides other things, I am under daily pressure because of my anxiety for all of the churches. This is to say nothing of Paul's own coming to faith, which was no still small voice in the breeze, but a blinding light on the road to Damascus that knocked Paul from his horse and to his senses. Somehow, in spite of all the hard times, or maybe in part because of them, Paul never lost sight of the original vision. The surpassing grace of God, he calls it, God's indescribable gift. Paul knew that there were many good reasons for human generosity, but the best was out of a sense of gratitude in response to God's grace a deep and abiding sense of gratitude for God's unmerited favor, his love that is free as rain. The rabbis told a story about a farmer who had two sons. As soon as they were old enough to walk, he took them to the fields and he taught them everything that he knew about growing crops and raising animals. When the farmer got too old to work with the boys, 
the boys took over. When their father died, they decided to keep their partnership. So each brother contributed what he could, and during every harvest they would divide equally what they had corporately produced. Across the years, the elder brother never married. He remained a bachelor farmer. The younger brother did marry and had eight wonderful children. Some years later, when they were having a wonderful harvest, the elder brother thought to himself one night, My brother has ten mouths to feed. I have only one. He really needs more of the harvest than I do, but I know he is much too fair to renegotiate. In the dead of the night when he is asleep, I'll take some of what I have put in my barn, and I'll slip it over into his barn to help him feed his children. At that very time he was planning, the younger brother was thinking to himself, God has given me these wonderful children to support me in my old age. My brother has not been so fortunate. He really needs more of this harvest for his old age than I do, but I know him. He's much too fair. He'll never renegotiate. I know what I'll do. In the dead of the night, when he is asleep, I'll take some of what I put in my barn and slip it into his barn. And so one night, when the moon was full, the two brothers came face to face, each on a mission of generosity. The rabbi said that there was not a cloud in the sky, and yet at that moment of meeting, a gentle rain began to fall. You know what it was? The drops of rain, the rabbi said, were the tears of God. God weeping for joy because two of his children had gotten the point. Two of God's children had come to realize that generosity is the deepest characteristic of all that is holy.